So I wanted to make a video to tell you guys how I got started with my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gym. I uh, started up back in May of 2015, been going strong now, and uh, we have 120 students. Things are going really well, so here's how it happened. I did it um, 100%. I didn't work any side jobs. I didn't, you know, uh, the, the only real help that I can say that I had is the fact that I, that I am married and while I was doing it, um, you know, my wife was able to pick up the slack with, uh, with her income, but it didn't take very long. And that's the whole point. Like we, she didn't really have to sacrifice much. Um, because when I started my gym, I started off with 20 people. So at a hundred dollars a month. So I was able to, to start my business uh, from day one, making $2,000 a month, which again, that's not a lot of money, but um, it's a start and it's a, it's a, it's a decent start, you know, if, if you only have $3,000 to start. So, um, so let me get into a little bit about how I did this. Um, first, I needed to find a geographic location. I wanted to find a place that um, had at least a population of 50,000 or more just because it's a numbers game, you know, uh, you don't want to try to, you don't want to move to a really rural place where there's like a population of 10,000 or 20,000 and try to start a jujitsu gym. It's going to be very, very difficult for you to become successful. So, you know, I'm pulling from an area that's uh, between where I live, uh, Bradenton, Sarasota, you know, between those two towns alone, you're looking at over a hundred thousand people. So the first thing you want to do is find a place where there where there's people. And of course, where there's people, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be other, other businesses, other gyms and stuff like that. And you're going to have to figure out within the location, the geographic location, this is where it starts to get tricky. You have to figure out where you're going to open and how you're going to open. Uh, and with $3,000, you're certainly not going to go and rent, you know, rent a, a commercial property and think that you're going to be able to build it out like, like you, like you should. And, do all the normal things that people with money can do, uh, you're going to have to do things a little different. So let's get into the, let's get into the thick of it. Um, so how does one, so how did I spend my $3,000? Uh, basically I spent it on the following. I spent it on an LLC, a website, uh, gym software, go a Google ad or Google ads and my first month's rent, uh, at the location um, that I, that I, uh, that I ended up getting into. So what you're going to be looking to do is you're going to be looking to sublet. Now, the good news is there's a lot of opportunities for subletting and you just have to find them. They're, they're out there though. They're everywhere. So what I ended up doing was I chose a karate school. And the reason why I chose a karate school was because I was looking for, the opportunity to merge with a gym and be able to create a program from that merger as well as uh, teach my own jujitsu program. So if the karate instructor is teaching karate and I'm teaching jujitsu, we could maybe combine our efforts and build an MMA program from that, uh, depending on, of course, how, how well the karate instructor striking is and um, and some, you know, some other factors. I mean, obviously you needed someone to, to teach wrestling and maybe if you're a good wrestler, you can teach that uh, along with jujitsu. Um, maybe you have the whole package, you know, maybe you're a striker, you're an MMA fighter, you're, you're a jujitsu guy, you're a wrestler, everything. You might have those skills and you can use those skills. So the, the first gym I called, it, you know, things you have to, you're going to do some cold calling here. Okay. So we should back up a little bit. You're going to have to make some cold calls to, to make this happen because um, there's still a lot of karate guys that are stuck in the eighties and they hate, they hate jujitsu. They hate the idea that we've as a martial art have sort of taken over and dominated the space. Um, you know, wh what are you going to do? It is what it is. I, I remember the, the first guy that I called was a guy from this, um, uh, place called, uh, ancient ways. I think the guy's name is Boone or Boo or Boo. Boone or something, Boone or something like that. I, I don't remember exactly, but we had a hilarious conversation because, uh, you know, I just told him who I was. I said, Hey man, um, 
My name's Sonny Parlin. Uh, I'm a brown. I was a brown belt at the time. I'm a brown belt under Rob Khan, and uh, you know Rob is uh, is under Hoist Gracie, and um, you know I'm looking for a place to um, to open up and start teaching jujitsu classes. And I was wondering if you if you might be interested in uh, having a jujitsu program at your gym, and maybe we could combine some efforts. Whatever my spiel was to the guy, and I just remember the guy said something like. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not really interested because we do real self-defense here. And I said, oh, oh, you do you do real self I, I'm sorry. I thought I was calling the fake self-defense place. Um, I didn't realize. I didn't realize you guys did actual real self-defense. So it was uh, it was quite it was quite funny. Um, you know, I didn't even I didn't even argue with the guy. I didn't like get into a. You know, I was on a mission, and so I just hung up with the guy and called the next one, you know, and I made a few phone calls until I found uh, the gym that I actually went in. They had mats, which was a real big plus. They had zebra mats already. I mean, they were really old and crusty zebra mats, but they were mats that I didn't have to buy. This was a huge plus for me, right? It was uh, it was very lucky for me that that uh, that they had mats because it meant that I could start without having to worry about that and it was a big enough mat space that it could accommodate the small number of people that I'd be dealing with when I first started so so that's how I got started in the karate gym right and and the deal that we sort of worked out was um, it was something like uh, I didn't, I didn't want to give up, and this is good advice, by the way. Don't give up a piece of your, of your business um, in exchange for uh, a space at, at, at a karate gym. Never do that. Always just offer to pay rent, right? Like they, you know, ask them to sublet and pay a specific dollar amount per month for rent and try to get the times that, you, that you're looking for, right? So... A lot of times, gyms that run don't run full time. A lot of karate gyms, they're just part time gyms. These guys run, they have full time jobs and they run their karate school at night. Um, so you can run day classes and then you can run your night classes when they're done, which they, they started, I think they started their night classes at like six and they were done by seven or seven fifteen or something like that. And, uh, so I was able to get get in there for like seven seven thirty to start classes, which was perfect. And he also had a time during the day, which was also great. And so I think uh, I ended up paying him something like three hundred bucks a month. And and it went up, it went up as I got more students, and and it became you know we were starting to like really share the building like in a fifty fifty kind of way. So I ended up actually just taking over half of the rent that um, he was paying. So, at, you know, he was really cool and fair about it at first. And, uh, you know, let me, get, let me get started. And as I added more students to my roles, my rent slowly increased until it became half of what he was actually paying. And I think it, that ended up being like, I don't know, twelve fifty or something like that a month. And uh, it was a good it was a good choice. It, it worked out well and it was a good way to get started. And there's other places you don't need to do a karate gym. You, you mean you could look at local fitness gyms, right? Local weightlifting gyms. They oftentimes have a wide open area where they have mats already that that are ready to go. You just go in, you talk to the owner and you ask them, you know, for the slots that you're looking for. Maybe they have three or four nights a week that you can rent the space maybe some daytime daytime spots uh crossfit academies that's another one you know any any kind of maybe yoga studios you know any any type of business that does like fitness or anything like that then and, and they have a lot of space crossfit gyms are are big you know i know a few people who have opened their gym inside of a crossfit gym and they're doing great uh you don't need to necessarily have your own location with your own sign and all that stuff in order to be successful uh, as a jiu-jitsu instructor running a jiu-jitsu gym. I mean, you don't even really need a great location <clears throat> in terms of uh, storefront or, or foot traffic because 
t in today's day and age, it's 2018, man. It's all your traffic is going to come from your website, from Google. Like this is your marketing. Your marketing is on the web, so you don't have to worry about, you know, the physical location of your gym and the signage and all that. We don't. I don't even have a sign on the front of my gym, so um, there's no sign. I think there's like a generic martial arts sign or something. It's really small, hard to see, uh, but that doesn't matter because. Uh, on the web, we are visible, and that's the only place that you really need to worry about being visible to the outside public. So don't get hung up in worrying too much about signage or foot traffic or that kind of thing. Uh, it's it's nothing to be worried about. So my first p piece of advice for people looking to save serious money is sublet. Okay, sublet from someone else who is already established and you can just get in there and then uh, hopefully they have mats. If they don't have mats, that's something you're gonna have to figure out. And uh, I did end up having to figure that out and I'll get into that. So I'd like to give a shout out to Danny uh, Newvault who runs uh, the MMAC tournament down here in Florida. Danny was the one who made my mats for me and the lucky break that I had was um, that he, he gave me a great price. A couple lucky breaks. One, he gave me a great price. Two, he let me finance it at 0%. And, uh, you know, I, I just got lucky with that. But Danny's a great guy. He's, he's a friend, and that's why he did that. Um, but you don't, need, you don't need that. Like, you can still, like, if you go to, say, Zebra, they have financing right? Fuji mats, they have financing, right? You can get financing for mats. If you really need to figure out mats, you can get financing for them. But I just wanted to give a shout out to Danny because Danny makes beautiful mats and he did a great job with ours. And I would highly recommend Danny if you're looking for jujitsu mats and you live in the Florida area. I don't know, maybe he does nationwide, but um, yeah. I'll try to find the link for Danny's website and put it in the description of this video so you can find it. One of the, one of the things <clears throat> that you're going to need for sure is you're going to need a Google presence, a website. Um, these are important, okay? Now, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. I think I did, but I was a software engineer for the 18 years before I started uh, my gym. So... I had the experience and the knowledge to be able to build my own website and I did a great job with it but like any other you know any other thing that that starts to go on like it becomes more of a burden right uh, as the business grows and I'm dealing with more people and I'm dealing with more problems and I'm dealing with you know a larger student population things like updating my website and making sure that my website is generating leads and stuff like that becomes a much more difficult task, even for someone like me who knows how to do it. So I um, recently offloaded that responsibility to another company that I use, um, and they build my website for me. They're called Market Muscles. They're really good. And uh, I pay them a monthly fee, and they do my website for me and it's it's great I don't have to really worry about it and I'm getting more leads now than I've ever gotten before so I would highly recommend market muscles if you're looking for a good company um, they're you know they're a little pricey I think they charge something like two you know 230 to 300 bucks a month or something like that and there might be a setup fee but I'll tell you what um, if you're paying 300 bucks a month to this website and it's generating you know, um, two to three thousand dollars a month in business, then it's worth it, you know. Uh, and, and they've consistently, ever since I started using this website, I've consistently been signing up anywhere between 15 to 20 students per month. I mean, it has been unbelievable the response from this website, it is great. So, what else? Um, Gym software. You're going to need gym software. What do I mean by gym software? I need software to run your gym, the day-to-day, -day, the people that are coming in and taking classes from you, right? Checking them in, taking their attendance, getting them into the system, get, getting them billed uh, on a monthly basis so that you don't have to manually do it. It automatically bills them. The software, there's a bunch out there. The one that I personally use is called Zen Planner. 
I like Zen Planner. Um, I think it's it's a, it's a great price point, and it has all the features that I need and a lot that I don't need. I mean, it's got way more features than than I'll ever use. And I know that there's other ones out there like Rainmaker that people talk about. And Rainmaker is is seems like a nice program too, but it's like it's a lot more expensive than Zen Planner and. I don't really see the benefit of using that over Zen Planner. There's also Mind Body, that's another one. You know, I want to I want to give equal time. Um, uh, there, there's there's a few of them. Uh, there's the, those are the big ones though. I think Mind Body, Rainmaker, and Zen Planner. Like I said, I use Zen Planner. Zen Planner has been very good to me. Um, they answer the phone when you call. If you have problems, they can solve them. You know, like <clears throat> every every gym software is going to have its 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 caveats and you know its its great points and its weak points, whatever. You know, take a look at what's out there in the marketplace, see what's right for you. But like I said, I've been using Zen Planner. I've been in business now for almost four years, and uh, Zen Planner has been great. It's been really really good. What else? Um, all right, so how did I get started specifically, right? So <clears throat> once I had my website up, once I had my gym software, uh, now I had to, oh, and, and of course I had to get my LLC. I would recommend starting off if your business as an LLC because um, it's just, it's cheap to get started. You can, you can do an S corporation, but... Um, you know, I just, after three and a half years or something, I just switched to an S Corp because it was going to save me money in taxes. And, so, and that's what my accountant recommended. So um, that's what I'm doing. That's another thing, by the way. Get an accountant, right? Don't try to do your own books. You know, you're not a, if, if you don't, unless you know what you're doing, right? If you know what you're doing, maybe you were a bookkeeper or maybe you went to school for it or something and, and you know how to do that stuff, fine, do it. But if you're like me and you don't know anything about finances or how to keep books and taxes and all that and you don't want to get in trouble with the government, hire an accountant. It's a good idea. I pay 125 bucks to my accountant per month to basically go through and take it all, take a look at my bank account and see what I'm spending, what I'm buying, uh, <clears throat> what I'm purchasing, what I'm, what, you know, how much money I'm getting. And, uh, they, they balance the books for me and tell me what I need to pay the government. And my accountant does a really good job and she, keep, you know, she keeps my, my bills really low. So I'm, I'm very happy with my accountant. After you set up your business entity, which can be an LLC or an S corp, you know, look look into what you want to do. But like I said, if you want to start easy, just get an LLC. It's simple, you know. Or you, you could do a sole proprietorship. There's there's a bunch of ways to start a business. Um, there's a website. Uh, what's that website where you can go to LegalZoom? You can go to LegalZoom.com. I think that's where I went, and I figured it out from there. Uh, what else? So, um, yeah, so I, I knew I had things lined up and, uh, and I told the guy, uh, at the karate place that I needed a few months to, you know, uh, that I was going to start in like, say, I, I think I gave myself three months to get started or two months, maybe something like that. And what I did was I created a Google ad and in the Google ad, the Google ad pointed to the website and to this offer that I, that I created, which was. Um, a, you pay a hundred dollars and you will get a self-defense seminar, right? And also one month of jujitsu, all of that for $100. So you're going to get a two hour self-defense seminar and you're going to get your first month of jujitsu all for a hundred bucks, no, 100 bucks, no contracts, anything like that. Um, you know, and I forget exactly how I worded it, but I knew that people were signing up for something sight unseen, so um, I had to make the offer really enticing. So, a hundred bucks for a two-hour self-defense seminar and a free month of jujitsu, or just a month of jujitsu, because it's not free. They're paying you a hundred bucks. All of that for a hundred bucks was a really good deal, and I put that out on Google, and 
um, and I threw like 500 bucks. So of my three grand, I threw 500 bucks, maybe 600, something like five or 600 bucks at this ad. I got 20 people to sign up sight unseen. It was, it was a huge success. You know, two weeks before I officially started teaching classes, we did the two hour self-defense seminar where I went over just basic, you know, jujitsu 101 type stuff, you know, to, you know, escaping the mount and, you know, how to, how to deal with the sucker punch and taking people down and establishing dominant control, going to the, you know, getting to the rear naked choke and, you know, how to deal with uh, punches from the mount, how to deal with punches from the guard, just all that kind of stuff. You know, we, we did a nice, you know, two hour long seminar and I think people really enjoyed it. Uh, they all stayed, right? So that was it. That was, I had 20 students right out of the gate. And the next thing I know, boom, the next month came and we had, I think maybe 22 students, you know, and, and then every month I kept adding to the roles and, uh, that was it. Uh, I, I made it all the way. So now we're talking, it's been, I, I opened in May. I think yeah, it was May, and uh, so I think I'm at like three and a half years right now, uh, and I've got 120 students now. I don't, I don't have a kids program, although our gym has a kids program. I have nothing to do with it. It's um, so I ended up moving, and and subletting yet again, uh, from from but this time from another jujitsu gym. But this but this time the jujitsu gym that I that I subletted from they had a very very small adult program and a very big kids program i had a very small kids program but a very large adult program so we decided to join forces and then i just keep the adult money that comes in and they keep the kid money that comes in and we we cut that off at the age of 16 just like um just like the jujitsu does you know you're you don't you can't get a blue belt to your 16 anyway so so I basically teach only adults, and um, I sublet now from a different location. Oh yeah, I would recommend if I didn't say this earlier, um, get a Google My Business account. Google My Business is a great way to get your business on Google. You will get them. You know, you can add the location so that when people search for your location, it comes up in the maps. It comes up, you know, in the organic search. And you can put ads on that stuff. And uh, yeah, you definitely want to have a Google My Business account. Trying to think of some other software that I use, other things that I do. Uh, I can't really think of anything at the moment. But that's the basic story of how I got started doing, uh, running my gym. And things are going extremely well. I'm very happy where I am and working with the people that I'm working with. I have a great crew. I teach a lot of Leos. I have a lot of women um, that train. It's just a, it's just a slow build. You know, you got to stick with it. You got to make sure you're there, a hundred percent. It's not like having a job where if you don't feel like going, you can just call in sick. I can do that now, but because I have guys that are good enough that that can teach now. But you know, at first, it's all you. Nobody else can there's there's no there's no backup you know you have to do everything you can't if you say you're going to be open you got to be open man you can't cancel classes because you don't feel good you got to go and teach and when you go there you got to try to be in a good mood right you got to be happy right you want to this is your students so you want to make them happy you want to make them feel good you want to make them feel like it's about them right right so this is this is a um, a skill in and of itself and and I think the reason why most jiu-jitsu gyms succeed or fail is based completely on one factor and that is the personality of the person who's teaching the most classes so the person in charge you got to be someone you got to be you have to be likable by someone whether they are uh, you know a 16 year old um, millennial with no real life experience or someone who's 70 and wrestled, you know, 50 years ago and, uh, and wants to get back into it. So 
you, you have to be able to talk to, uh, relate to, and be liked by an entire population of people. I mean, you get all kinds of people in a jiu-jitsu gym. We have lawyers and prosecutors and cops and special forces army guys. And then we have like stay-at-home moms and we have doctors and we have um, carpenters and people who flip houses and I mean, we, we, there's, there's an unlimited number of t the type of people. There's no, there's no, you can't narrow it down, right? You, you have everybody, everybody's in there. And you're going to have all manner of, of uh, personalities, all manner of intellectual levels. Um, there's going to be people in there that you're going to be a lot smarter than. There's going to be people in there that could run circles around you intellectually. And you need to be able to relate to all of them. So... That's the biggest challenge. Student retention, uh, all that stuff. These are things that you need to think about. Um, you need to think about a curriculum. You need to think about, you know, what you're going to teach on a day-to-day -day basis, how you're going to do promotions, whether or not you're going to do the gi. Um, if you're going to teach gi, then you gotta, you got to have a, uh, a, a place where you can get gis from. I recommend gameness. Uh, Gameness is a great company. I like their geese and I like their belts, and they have good prices. And you can get a, you can get a manufacturer's account or whatever you call it, um, and you can get a lot of this stuff at a discount. And then you can sell it to your students and uh, make money that way. But at my gym, we don't do geese, so it doesn't matter anyway. Um. I don't have to worry about that, but I still buy belts because I, you know, we still go through the whole belt system, even though we don't, we just do it no gi, you know. So that's how I got started with just three thousand dollars. Of course, I had some people who I could look to to point me in the right direction when needed, like my coaches, and uh, they really did a great job helping me out when I when I had questions and when I needed uh, help with a curriculum or something like that. Questions about you know, schedules, whatever it was, my coaches were there for me. So I thank them immensely. Rob Khan is my coach. Matt Arroyo hell, helped me quite a bit. Robbie, Robbie D'Onofrio helped me quite a bit. Um, Midget helped me quite a bit. Uh, Bamboo uh, from Gracie Tampa West. These are, just, these are all my, my brethren here. So shout out to all those guys running gyms and uh, if you are looking to start a gym I hope this video helps you out and good luck